but it would be my honor to have you view the collection as my guest. There you are. Merci. Shall we? <laughs> so, I think that you already watched the movie, right? Yes, twice. How did you like it? I was very surprised because the reality of the, of the filming was very different to the final result in the sense that it's a film that took a long time to be made and it was hard, hard to finance and uh, Tony Fabian, the director, really struggled to produce it, to have it produced and there was not a lot of money. And then when I saw the film, I thought, Christ, they've worked wonders, you know. I mean, it's like, a, it's lavish. There's music, there's the great landscapes and the fashion and the, the images are rich. So it was like a shock to me. The reality was that we shot it in Budapest, you know, it was post-COVID, COVID, <clears throat> and um, it was the winter, it was, uh, it was pretty dire in a way, you know, it was like hard. And then suddenly it's like, it's, it's, it's like springtime in Paris and it's uh, romantic and beautiful and rich. So I was very happily surprised. And also I discovered that the real subject of the film is really <clears throat> not, not so much her, <clears throat> her fascination for the dress, but her obsession about, you know, making her dream come true at all costs, you know, like the sort of madness, really. It's this, this form of madness. It's not the madness of King George. It's the, it's the madness of, of, of Mrs. Harris. Can you somehow relate to Mrs. Harris? Like, did you ever go all in because you wanted to <clears> be <throat> a dream? In a funny way, I did in the past. When I was 17 and I came to London to audition for a drama school, I had that madness. I, I, I auditioned and I, I could hardly speak English. And, and, and yet I had that dream of getting a training in, in, in this country. And, and it worked. And I, I was so young and so determined. I had nothing could stop me. And my father, who was an actor, had tried very hard to stop me from being, you know, wanting to become an actor. And I've lost that in the process. I've loved, lost my optimism. I'm much more fatalistic now. Um, and I think it would be time to <clears throat> find a new dream and hold on to it with as much madness in a way. And when I see the film, I just think, ah, she gives me optimism. Okay, she enjoys the reality of the dress so much. She relishes it so much. That gives me hope because sometimes, you know, the world becomes so hard and so humanless in a way that you, you lose pleasure in things so you, you lose because everything everything is, is so much like a nightmare you know there's pollution and there's uh, war and there's uh, atrocities everywhere and so you think oh god it's hard so holding on to an object of dream and a beautiful object of dream and and fighting for it whether it's a, a, a an um an idea, ecology, uh, a, a piece of art, a film, a book, um, music. That is so important because it gives you a reason to live. And also that's what life is about, is about, you know, uh, enjoying every day and, and creating something with it. Yeah, you say it. I think there's so much beauty in the ordinary, but we tend to forget about about it because we are focused on glamour, success, um, prestige, uh, whatsoever. Um, what's the most ordinary thing that you still find beauty in? I live in the countryside in France. I mean, I live in Paris, but just, just when I work. Otherwise, I'm a countryman and I, I love gardening. Um, and I, I love very, very simple things. Botanics, um, earth, plants, dogs. This is very basic. And whenever I'm depressed, especially in Paris, you know, it's traffic, crazy, aggressive people. I just have to look at a tree. I have to, I have to find a plant somewhere in the gray world of, uh, and the pollution. And if I look at a tree, then I will find the sense of the universe and the, and the, and the energy and, and, the, and the beauty. That is something that I keep with me. And I just need in a city to, to, to find, sometimes it's just a bit of sky. 
uh, uh, yes, you know, because we are so, as you were saying, so obsessed by our activities, absurd activities. Um, so you ha- you have to connect to the the bigger things of the universe. Um, that's what I try to do. And um, actually, gardening is the only thing that I know how to do. Really, I mean, uh, um, so that's my little treasure. Say that you know how to do acting. <laughs> No, I always find that I'm a usurper. You know, um, you'll find that with most actors and a lot of artists, they always have the impression that they they will be discovered as as complete uh, usurpers, Imposters. imposters. Yes, exactly. We're, we're, oh my God! They're gonna, one day they're going to find out that I really do not know what I'm talking about. But the gardening, I know, because it's there, so it grows, and you see, uh, that's objective. I know that that works. That's so interesting. Do you know Alba's character? She mentioned in a scene something that hit me hard because I could totally relate. And uh, she says something like, there's a certain feeling of emptiness after a show. And I could tell that whenever I was working towards a huge project, um, right after it, I completely felt empty. And I was wondering, how do you feel as an actor after shooting a movie? Do you know, it's an, it, I feel that every day when we, there's a, now I have learned to recognize that feeling. You work on a set, you're with lots of people and, and it's exciting and hard and sometimes you struggle, but, but it's you know, a, a lot of adrenaline. And then they bring you home um, or you drive yourself home, whatever. And there's always a sort of depression that falls. And you think it's the end of the day, you know, sometimes night falls and all that. And you think, oh my God, why am I, why am I becoming depressed? And now I've learned to recognize that as that post-filming depression, t- emptiness on a daily basis. It's not just at the end of a film. It's just a, a and now I just think, okay, fine, this is the end of the day, you have to move on to something else, which is your real life. And you'll be fine, just go through that hour of in between. Hopefully, when I do a film, there's not going to be too much of a gap between uh, when I finish one and I start another one, so that I don't... What's very difficult for actors is finding their own lives again. That's why we love hotels, is because we are in a neutral environment. And we kind of you know, we get absorbed by the characters we portray and, and, and we, we, we like not to have, I like not to have my house with me. I just like this neutrality. Then when you go home, you think, oh my God, is this my life? Is this, it takes about a week to get used to your surroundings again. So it's an emptiness, but it's also recognizing yet again who you really are. <laughs> and sometimes, uh, you don't want to. <laughs> You'd rather stay with, um, you know, the character or that world. How do you deal with failure? It's, it's it's something that I think about a lot because I think as a as a as an actor, you have to deal with that notion right from the beginning. My dad was an actor, and when I said to him when I was sixteen and a half that I wanted to be a, a an actor, that was his m- m- biggest concern: is you know, y- how are you going to deal with rejection? Because It's going to be about rejection. Your whole life is going to be about rejection. You're going to be um, chosen for things that have nothing to do with your work. You're going to be chosen because of your appearance. You're going to be rejected because of your appearance, not necessarily because you're not good. So in a way, that's the biggest part of the training. And although you are prepared for it right from the beginning, um, it is still an issue. it can happen at any moment of your career. And it stings sometimes in a way that you think was never going to happen again. Um, <clears throat> you try out for a film, you don't care about it, you think, oh, they like me, they don't like me, and they, they don't take you, and it hurts so much, and it takes months to recover. Now I'm trying to be more fatalistic in general, and... Um, I believe in uh, my lucky star. So I think uh, uh, it's, uh, it's going it's to work. It's not going to work. I, I have a path that is uh, written, and uh, I hold on to that. That's how I deal with failure. 